Hi there, Mr. T back again. Thanks for checking in. In this episode, I'm going to take you on a road trip to beautiful Harabacoa, which is located in the La Vega region of the Dominican Republic. I'm off to Harabakoa. I've rented a little uh, sprinter here, so off we go. Alright, I'm well on my way. I'm on the bridge heading up to Mocha and I'm having a little bit of breakfast at the same time on Provecho. Rivers throughout Dominican Republic are popular for swimming and jumping off bridges, which you're about to see here. Road trips always makes me feel great because many foreigners come down here and get trapped in a town or a city many of them sitting in a bar all day or complaining about the hustlers and scamsters where if you instead get out in the countryside you'll see beautiful sights and meet some really laid-back people it's quite a different feeling and impression you'll get about the place definitely nice out here Over here you're going to see some of the most beautiful landscapes you can imagine. This is absolutely magic. Downhill windy roads gave me burning hot breaks. Absolutely spectacular landscape up here. It's like out of a fairy tale. Alright, I just stopped for the most traditional drink you can get, which is a cocoa drink here. The guy, he's very good with a manchetti. So you pay about 35 pesos for a cup of uh, fresh cocoa drink. It's amazing this guy still got 10 fingers on his hands. But he's very good at it. Sua area, it took me about two and a half hours to get to uh, Harabakoa. I haven't had as much rest lately as I probably should have, so this time I want to go a little bit more in luxury. So I'm going to check out Hotel Gran Himanoa. Hotel Gran Himanoa 
is located right on the river, close to a central park and Harabakoa Golf Club. It has 65 air-conditioned guest rooms with private balconies, cable TV, wireless internet and private bathrooms. You can also visit their spa which offers massages, body treatments and facials. And there's an outdoor pool, spa tub and sauna. The hotel also has a nice restaurant which is open for breakfast, lunch and dinner every day. Horse trekking and many other tours are also available from this location. So there's plenty to do. Now it's time for me to get checked in. Okay, I've got myself booked into what's called a superior room here at the Gran Himanoa. It's right up against the river, actually called Himanoa, hence the reason for the name of the hotel. Prices here are from about $70 to about $120, depending on whether you're a single person or whether you turn up with a family. But it's very nice. For now, I'm going to head into town and get myself a bite to eat. Seems to be very hip here in uh, Harabakoa to have a hoodie on. Sun protection. This is definitely the capital of hoodies. Okay, I'm out exploring. I'm by something called the River Club here in Harabakoa. And behind me you can hear a Dominican ripping right into the karaoke. Daytime karaoke, nothing better. Arabacoa has three large rivers, like Guata, Himenoa, and the one I'm at here, Yaka del Norte. The main tourist attractions are the mountains, the rivers, Hola, wine trees, and simply the beauty of the up. area. And due to its location here in the central mountain range, it usually has mild temperatures, hence the reason they've christened Harabakoa as the city of everlasting spring. Just enjoying a nice cup of coffee in one of their restaurants here. Watching all the guys in the tubes coming past. Beautiful day. Magic place up here, that's for sure. After all this sightseeing, I built up a big appetite, so I headed back to town to a very popular diner. Alright, it's dinner time and I've got the munchies, so I've just pulled into a nice cafeteria where they've got a good selection of different meats, empanadas, potatoes and other things. So, uh, let's see what I can get on the table. Alright, dinner time. I'm not much for caged animals, but I just came across a couple they have here near the diner where I was eating. Poor monkey. But anyway, he seems to be having some joy with this piece of fruit he's got in his hand. Next to the monkey, we've got a couple of big carrots here. Now that I was full and content, I decided that since it had been a long day driving, I would just relax at the hotel and check out what it looks like at night time with all the lights and to crawl in the spa pool. 
All right, just sunk into the jacuzzi here, having a little drink and uh, thinking about what I should get up to tomorrow. So, uh, cheers, everyone. All right, it's a little evening swim here. I'm lost in a daydream, dreaming about my bundle of joy. All right. It's morning, time to go adventuring. But first I'm gonna go and see what's for breakfast there. Yeah. On my program today, I'm gonna meet up with an exciting guy called Ellie, who runs another YouTube channel about Dominican Republic called Kiskeya Life. So that should be exciting. Later on, I'm going to be out hopefully paragliding, all going well, and uh, see what this whole place looks like from above. They've got a huge bird cage here as well, that you can enjoy watching. Many colorful little fellas. Around Harabacoa you'll find some unique places called ranchos. In these places they normally initiate tours, have hotel accommodation, restaurants, rivers, flying foxes, fish ponds and much more. Let's go and take a look. I've just arrived at something called Rancho Backwater, from where they take off and do all the river rafting. So I'm going to have a little look around and see what else they have here. <laughs> An excited group of ladies heading for the river rafting decided to rock the belly before their takeoff. At Rancho Baiquata they've got a range of different animals from large horses to small ponies, cute little dogs, and here's a cute donkey who decided to treat itself to a little sand bath. Here I am heading for the butterfly garden. So, what have you got here? Larvae, is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And what kind of butterfly is this? Ketupo. Okay, no. Papillo de limon. Papillo de limon. Papillo de limon. Papillo de limon. Mismo. Okay. So that's the cocoon of that. Uh, lemon butterfly. At certain times of the year here you'll find more butterflies than in others. But that's a natural cycle. Now it's time to see what they grow organically for the ranch and the restaurant. So this is uh, peppers, green peppers? Yes. So is this for the kitchen? Yes, for the kitchen. Okay, in these tanks they grow uh, fish, tilapia. Yeah. How big do they get? Like this. The bigger. Yeah, the bigger. This is mero. A small pond where they grow the mero fish. Rancho Baiguata is a really nice place just to come and hang out. Because they've got different four-legged animals, birds and fish, and plenty of space for children to run around. A nice restaurant and sometimes even entertainment. You can do all your tours from this one central point and for the extremists who want to go to Pico Duarte, the highest point in the Caribbean, 
you can take trekking tours that last for two to three days, and they've also got cozy hotel accommodation available. Next, I'm hooking up with one of the most interesting and knowledgeable foreigners living long term here in Dominican Republic, a gentleman called Alec Coday. Right now, I'm with another documentary maker here from Dominican Republic. Alec, thanks for being in my video. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Uh, we're up in Heart of Accord. This is the expert, not only on the country, but especially on the area here. Uh, can you please tell the viewers exactly where we are, Alec? Well, right now we are in Hamaca de Dios. It means God's hammock. And that's because there's an old saying here in Harabacoa. It means um, God lives everywhere, but he sleeps in Harabacoa, they say. So um, they decided to call this mountain God's hammock because that's where God sleeps in a hammock, I guess. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it's called God's hammock and it's a relatively exclusive area to get into. There's a lot of, uh, of the more wealthy people in the Dominican Republic have their vacation homes here. You know, we have president of the whatnot bank and we have the ambassador of I think Haiti over here and we got the so there's a lot of very you know um, big shot people yeah. prestigious people I guess yeah. our bank president's prestigious oh. <laughs> anyway, anyway so uh, can you tell them a bit about you uh, have the YouTube channel um, Kiskeya Life and you've made some documentaries about Harabakoa as well uh, what I've made a, I made a few and we're gonna have more yeah. Um, well, I special, specialize on videos about the DR, but more specifically about the history of the DR, and more specifically about certain places, to interesting places to visit. Um, so if you want to learn more about the history of, uh, well, not just the DR, that's what's called Kiskea, it's the whole island, about the DR, about Haiti. We visit Haiti, we visit uh, people here and there and everywhere. Uh, check out our channel. And you can okay. see more, learn more about... And how's it I love spelled? learning, so... Because I, I once... Kiskea, spelled the way you hear it. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Kiskeya. K-I-S-K-Y-A or something? Don't worry, Google will find it. Okay. Kiskeya Life. Great. And um, Plus, he's going to put some links on there somewhere. We're going to go up to this restaurant that you can see just up behind us if you just lift the camera up a bit. And uh, what's so unique about this restaurant? Uh, it is the highest restaurant in the whole Caribbean. And it's also the only restaurant, uh, by high we mean altitude, uh, and it's also the only restaurant in the whole Caribbean that has a rotating deck. So it's like an observation tech, like the stuff you see in Toronto or New York or so. Well, they have that here too. You can sit there, you can have your lunch, and you see the whole uh, view of Harabacoa rotating past you. And so it's a very exclusive area. It's even difficult to get in. You used, you used to have to pay to actually just to visit the restaurant, not just to eat there, just to go in. Mm -hmm. They've abolished that, but that was, that was interesting. That's how exclusive that place is. Great. Well, should we uh, start climbing you won't have the mountain? To, you won't have to pay. I'm uh, <laughs> my contacts. He's got contacts. Let's go. Before heading to the mountain restaurant, Alec took me on three unique little adventures. Here we go. Alright, Alex brought me to a neat little place that has Japanese roots here in Harabakoa. Please tell them what's so special about this place, Alec. Well, this place here is called La Colonia Japonesa, the Japanese colony. And that's because it used to be a Japanese colony. Back in the uh, 1940s or so, the dictator brought in a whole lot of foreigners to populate the island. And here in Harabakoa, they put Japanese people. Several dozen families moved here. And now, uh, well, they're all gone. All the older ones are, are either dead or uh, moved back to Japan. But there's still a strong connection between Harabakoa and Japan. And that's why they, the Japanese government built this park for uh, Harabakoa as a memory of the Japanese immigrants. And a lot of the streets here, they have Japanese names. And uh, several Dominicans still have Japanese roots and Japanese names as well. And they so mixed a lot? Or? Yeah, yes, a lot of you will go around, you will find Dominicans with uh, Japanese eyes. Japanese eyes. You're like, how is that possible? I remember one, one guy, my dad speaks a couple of words Japanese. He walked up to one Dominican who looked more Japanese than Dominican and said a few words to him. And the guy looks at him Dominican and says, Hi, is it, is it the That guy speaks more Japanese than I do. <laughs> because they didn't don't speak any Japanese anymore, even the ones that look Japanese. Next, Alec took me to a cool place where we could ride a flying fox across a beautiful little lake. <laughs> And then it was my turn. <laughs> All right, next up, I'm off to do some paragliding, starting from the top of the Harabakoa Hills. <laughs>
I'm scared brainless, so I'm gonna use my stuntman, Mr. T, to do the flying for me. Let's see if he's gonna survive. <laughs> Okay. You want to film that? We're calibrating. <laughs> we're calibrating. Calibrating the drone. And hopefully, when I land, we'll be celebrating. <laughs> Whoa, I'm dizzy. <laughs> yeah. Well, careful. Let's All right, that. Alec, he's going to fly the drone and uh, follow us. While I was getting geared up on the ground and getting my final instructions, Alex sent the drone in the air to make sure both the drone and its camera was working well for the upcoming paragliding chase. Right, safely airborne, we are floating around the sky. This must be one of the closest feelings to being an eagle, as you can see all the mountains, rivers and the Harabakor township. It's actually very safe to be up here, because unless you do a dramatic maneuver of one of these gliders, it actually glides very solid in the air. And the pilots, Juan and Francis, are very experienced and fly their passengers very safely. So I can highly recommend you guys to try this activity out. It's absolutely magic. During your flight, you can also have good conversation with the pilot will be more than happy to tell you about the area and what you can see as you are flying around. Francis he took me right over to the edge of a valley where we could see a waterfall that hardly anyone can actually access. Very untouched and absolutely breathtaking. As Francis and I was gliding peacefully above the hills, the crew packed up the drone and headed down to the landing site at the bottom of the hills. Alright, it was time for us to start descending and the team was ready for us on the ground. Please note that some of the final clips from the paragliding has been spared up. Landing is usually done on a grass field. As you come in for the landing itself, your pilot will ask you to lift your feet and you'll literally slide on your bottom in the seat that you're sitting in until you come to a full stop. Very smooth. Here we are. <laughs> All right, I'll go and say hello to the team. Hola. Come on, sir. You got to try that. That was absolutely spectacular. All right, Francis took me to safety here. Thank yes. you for an excellent flight. You are welcome every time. <laughs> you are that was welcome. absolutely welcome, wonderful. Mr. T. You are an amazing pilot. Mr. T flying with Hope for Gliding here in Havakua. Come <laughs> to enjoy it. Here's the brother to Francis. Yeah. Juan. 
Thank you for that. That was excellent. You're welcome here. Could you please tell the viewers how much it actually uh, costs if they want to come out and fly with you guys? Yes, the price is sixty dollars each person. So this includes a GoPro. You can take a picture and make a video. That's including the price. Excellent. If you you have a big group, more than five, we can make uh, fifty dollars for people. Okay, excellent. And how long does it take? If fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, so depending on the weather, you know. The actual flight. But going up and down. Uh, and the, the trip whole is uh, half an hour, I think. Yeah. Yes. These are the guys to fly with. I felt very safe up there. Sure. Good. Bye. Bye. All right. Now that I've been uh, out flying and got grounded again, Alex has been kind enough to take me up to a nice restaurant in... Uh, well, we're still in Hama Hamaca de Dios, still on God's Hammock. Yep. And uh, this is called, restaurant is called uh, Aroma de la Montaña, uh, the aroma of the mountain. And it's the fanciest place we have in Jarabacoa, and you're going to see why. For those mountains in the distance, we probably see Susua, Puerto Plata, all these areas. I think Puerto Plata is going over here. So that's probably a bad direction. Yeah. Uh, that's how it is. That's how high we are. And then, if you look here, he goes the, the, the whole road. Uh, there's a road going through these mountains, all the way through there, and then we get to Pico Duarte, which is the highest mountain in the Caribbean. And you can drive with the car really close and then hike the rest for about a day and a half. You have to hike and then you get to Pico Duarte and then hike back and again it's about a day and a half so it's about an expedition of three days to get to Pico Duarte from the last spot of civilization. Thanks for the info. Yeah. Let's have a coffee. You're buying right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Alex just mentioned to me that in Jarabacoa they're famous for their strawberries so we've got a little uh, strawberry smoothie sitting here in front of us. Well once you're in Jarabacoa and especially during the season you will see street vendors all over the place selling strawberries for about 100, 150 pesos a pack, a pound. But the interesting thing is that most of these strawberries aren't from Jarabacoa, they're actually from Constanza. But because Jarabacoa is so famous for its strawberries and they sell most of it here. So you can get always fresh strawberries in Jarabacoa, that's something the place is known Constanza for. Constanza is only what about an hour? Constanza is about through the mountains, you saw the, from, from the area, you saw the road probably, about an hour, hour, hour and a half, about an hour. Downstairs in their wine cellar right now. So, very comfortable chairs. He's back in the States now, but the restaurant is still running, and he wanted a nice place where he could, you know, drink his wine. So he built this place. There's a, they got some very expensive bottles here too. So I don't think there's any smoking here anywhere. It's all a no smoke, but uh, plenty of yes wine. Beautiful. All right, let's get out and see the rotating pick. Do you dare to go to the rotation? I dare you to go to the rotation. Here we go. Don't forget the year. It takes about 45 minutes for the whole rotation. Yay! Yeah, we did it. <laughs> Arabacoa is not exactly a common tourist destination. We don't get too many foreigners up here, but we do get a lot of Dominican tourists. So when you come here, don't expect like it's overfilled and you're going to see a lot of people from different countries. No, it's more of a secret 
spot for gem. those. Yeah, yeah a secret gem is a spot for those who like want to experience something away from the from the beaten path. Mm -hmm. But it's mostly a place for people to just chill. You know, we have a lot of a lot of mansions here. A lot of people rent out these places. So you can rent a, a mountainside uh, mansion and just have a weekend of peace and quiet. And what do they pay for a luxury villa, roughly? Uh, the luxury ones will go for around five hundred dollars uh, for a weekend. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. But then we're talking luxury. We're talking pools. We're talking jacuzzi. We're talking big rooms. We're talking like nice stuff. Thank you for being on video. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Good. So uh, we move on. As I had a pretty action-packed day, I decided to call it a day and head back to the hotel for a bit of relaxation and to get ready for the next day with final activities in Harabakoa. All right, it's Sunday morning. I've just checked out of the hotel and now I want to go and see if I can find one of the big waterfalls in the area. All right, at the moment I've just picked up a nice tour guide from the area here, Paul Marine. Thanks for being on the video. Sure, Mr. T. Thank you for inviting me. Paul. Yes. How far out of uh, out of a core is this? Well, from the city limit is about four kilometers. Uh, yes, it's okay. not that far. All right. And um, is there other golf courses here in the area, or this is this the only area? golf course here in Harabakoa City? But it's beautiful. Yes. How many holes here? Um, I think like 24 holes. 24 holes. You yeah. have the 18 hole and then you got extra four holes. Yeah. Great. So there you go. There's a golf course. Paul's going to take me to some waterfalls as well, at least one. So uh, let's get going. We're ready. Let's go. And Paul, where are we now? Well, right now we're in Piedra Blanca. This is the beginning towards the Salto Jimenor 2. Which is a waterfall. It's a waterfall mm -hmm. with five walking bridges. As we arrived after a heavy rainfall the night before, the water was quite brown. However, some days it's very clear, which makes it even more amazing up here. Even though it rained last night, the main river may get a lot of uh, sort of muddy water coming down in it. But from the side, you get very fresh, clean water. So I'm going to risk my life hoping there wasn't a donkey upstream doing something. Mm, tastes fresh, good. Better than what you can get in a bottle. Okay, so we're here at the Himenoa 2. Okay, it's one of the waterfalls most biggest in Harabakoa. We have three waterfalls. And this is the second biggest one. So Even the, though the Himenoa 1, is that uh, the biggest one? Yes, it's, it's more towards the mountain towards going towards Constanza. So today is that powerful? Yeah. Yeah. That's because good. Because it's rain. Because it's rain. As you can see the water is a little bit muddy. That means last night there was a lot of activity in the mountain with the rain. Now you mentioned about another river. It's a Jacal where they do a lot of uh, Rapping? Rapping? Yes. Um, it's called um, Rio Jaque, the Norte. That's the most main river on the north side of the, of the country. Mm -hmm. It also has Jaque del Sur, which in uh, Pico Duarte, which is the highest mountain in, in Harabacoa in the Caribbean, has the Rio um, Jaque where it starts. Okay. So, um, anybody who wants to go river rafting, what sort of ride can they expect down that? Pretty wild or? You could um, cate um, the category, safe? yeah, safe. Category when it rains mm -hmm. is around five. Yeah, and, when it, and when they don't rain, it's, it's, it's not that heavy. Okay. okay, so we found this here while we was walking. This looks most like... Well, I, I thought it was uh, a fruit? the tail of some dog that had been ah. chopped <laughs> off. Yeah. Okay. But it, more, well, it looks Very more soft. like polyester. Ah. Very what soft. they make some of the clothing, that's what it looks like. It's not cotton. Cotton is different. 
Well, it was either that or somebody had dropped one of the microphones with a yeah, sound be. sock on it. <laughs> Oh, do you like living up here? Yes, it's wonderful. You have a lot of nature, forests, rivers. Mm -hmm. You also have um, good people, a lot of different fruits, vegetables. This town is no more for flowers. This is a flower town. Oh, we have all type of fruits, mangoes, oranges, pineapples. We grow all fruits. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good town. It's on the high top of the limit of the of the country, so it's a very enjoyable place. I've just called into another nice spot called Casa Tranquila, and we're just going to show you a few clips around the uh, establishment here, so you can have another option to where you can stay when you come to Heart of the Core. When it comes to booking accommodation, of course if there's a flower festival or other event on, it could be very booked up. But usually you can find quite a few accommodation choices up here, right from small cabins by the river to backpackers or bed and breakfasts, or you can try the hotels. Just gotta research the various booking sites online till you find a good deal. Next, Paul took me to another valley to a very small yet very unique waterfall and along the way we got to enjoy some very nice scenery. Paul, where are we now? Okay, so right now we are at the Cortina. It's one spot in Arabacoa after going to Manabao where people come and they enjoy themselves in the activity of nature. They so go it's about half an hour out from Arabacoa city center, out in a valley. In the valley. Yeah. Towards Manabao. Okay? You have the natural pool where it's from the natural water where it's not it's not contaminated. It's come from the mountain and people come here to shower off and they go to stress from the city. And Balneario. Balneario La Cortina. That means place where you can swim. Yeah? Swi a place where you can swim called the curtain. Let's go and have a look at the curtain. So is this drinkable, this waterfall? Yeah, sure. This water comes straight from the mountain. Okay, and um, the good thing about it is it's nice and cold. It's very drink, cold. You yeah. can just drink it off your hand. That means the water in the pool here is very cold. Exactly. It's the same water from here feeds the pool. This is what can be so fascinating about Dominican Republic. You can be out in a beautiful valley with pools and waterfalls and you'll suddenly experience a daytime karaoke. <laughs> We're just having a super fresh couple of mountain juices here. Cheers. All, na all natural. Cheers. All best in Haramakoa. Huh? Delicious.
Oh, man. Oh, that's good. All right, that concludes my day here out with Paul or Pablo in Espanol. Thank you, Paul, for your okay, great tour guide see. service. And Anytime. we're going to leave his details in the bottom of the screen. So if you come to Harabakoa, you can ring or email ahead, contact them through Facebook. All right. And I better hit the road. See okay. Bye-bye, buddy. Bye -bye, buddy. Alright folks, there you have it. That was my three day trip to Harabakoa. If you like this video, please click like and recommend it to other people. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Or push the notification bell if you want to get instant notifications of my video releases. Thanks again for watching, take care and happy travels. Bye bye.